Hi everybody, Maria here. Um, so today just want to do a nice little project with you here using uh, an embossing folder and uh, some of the distress glazes. Um, these are pretty, pretty cool. Um, the, I, I tend to get asked about these a little bit. People are curious. Um, so this is a case of rather than go out and buy, um, I'll show you a few things. So today we're just going to do one um, sort of project, one technique um, with this. She's in, as I say, an embossing folder and um, some distress ink. So it's going to be a kind of um, a resist, all right? I, I love anything resist, I really do. So what are we going to need? So as I say, we're going to need some distress glazes. So today I'm going to use uh, peel paint and fossilized amber uh, then an embossing folder now this one um, has arrived today and i have to say within about 30 minutes this has absolutely become um, my all-time favorite embossing folder i think so far um, this is from uh, lisa horton uh, lisa horton craft she's um she's a top top lady very talented and just all around nice person as well so i'm always happy to um to use anything nice from from lisa so this is a 3d embossing folder um it really is beautiful um i can't imagine this one being put away anytime soon uh, it's a six by six inch um, folder so really good size for various um, size projects so we've got that uh, what else we're going to use so some regular distress inks so uh, I've got ripe uh, persimmon uh, festive berries and I'm going to use a little bit of aged mahogany as well uh, so to apply those inks when, when we get around to that part uh, I'm going to use uh, blending tools for this one with foam applicators uh, we are going to need a uh, versamark or an embossing pad um, and I've actually given mine a little bit of a re-ink uh, using um, the, the re-ink so I've got these back in stock again finally um, it's a good one to have make this a little bit more um, juicy uh, we can use a little bit of um, talc or an anti-static bag um, to help the um, powder or the embossing glaze uh, not stick to where you don't want it having said that this piece is quite a rustic one so I'm really not um, worried about that. I, I don't want perfection on this piece. I, I want um, rustic. Um, and then I've used just some stamping cards. No particular special card um, for this one. Um, five by seven card blank. Uh, any sentiment of your choice. And I think uh, that's kind of it. And obviously your die cutting uh, machine. So today on my desk, I've got my trusty e-bosser. OK, right. So let's make a, a little start. Um, so. First of all, we need our embossing folder. And what we're going to do, when I was experimenting with this um, technique um, earlier today, I wanted to see whether I would get a really good result on, on either side of the, the folder. Because remember, one's a positive and one's the negative, if you like. So one is sort of embossing and one is, you know, the other side is sort of debossing, if you like. Um, and quite often when you do any techniques with your embossing folders, it's really cool and, and you know, that you can get a different look. Um, and that's sort of what I've gone for on the finished piece here so um on the the top panel here because i've actually done two separate pieces on the top panel here this is kind of the back of the design so the leaves are sort of lower they're sunken okay whereas down here this is the the front of the design um the beautiful leaves are um sort of raised up um and then what i've done is i've sort of uh, used a piece from from both i've chopped my pieces up and i've sort of fused them together okay um, so you might like just one part but it, it's always good to have a little look anyway okay so let's have a look so I'm having a feel of the the folder here so this side here is the leaves are sunken okay um, so this area here the area in between is the raised area so let's have a go with that piece first of all so I've got a piece of stamping card here ready um, 
and say I'm not actually going to worry about using the um, the talc as anti-static because if I get powder um, in, in other areas I'm actually really not worried this is I want this rustic look okay so I'm just going to come across with my Versamark pad okay now we need to press but we don't want to press too hard because we don't want to put too much of that Versamark in the sunken area okay we want to try and sort of contain that on the top and if you have a look you move your your folds you can see hopefully that it's kind of um, sort of glossy and I can see some on sort of areas middle of the leaves here which is absolutely fine that's it's just going to add um to this design um that's sort of one of the really good things about 3d embossing folders it's, it's not just one layer one level um of embossing you know they're just very cool right okay so i'm going to pop that piece of card into my folder like so okay so um organize your um your sandwich for your machine as per your particular um machine okay for 3d embossing folders so i'm just going to whiz this through the embosser just bear with me a second here we go lovely jubbly um, I prefer using the eBosser for 3D embossing folders. I, I find that my Gemini can be a little bit hit and miss. Um, so this is where it's good to have a couple of machines, uh, really. Ratio. Okay, so that's a piece. Let's pop those plates down on the floor. So when I lift this up here okay so this is the side now um where and you can you can hopefully see where you've got your um verse mark it'll just glisten very slightly right so i'm just going to pop okay some i'm going to sprinkle powder on for the moment oh hello uh and then let's get the the other one there is a method to my madness with this here we go because then also what i've got i'm just going to give this kind of a, a tap around okay and then also to one side here i've got kind of a mix of the two from earlier and i don't want to sort of waste those so i'm going to there we go let's just pop this on okay Let's go a little bit more. This. And then, okay, and again, I'm just going to kind of move that around a little bit, like so. Here we go. Right, so what you'll see here, when I finish tapping, I've got a lot of powder on the leaves there, okay? I did on the original piece as well, and I had to make a bit of a choice whether to go for it like this okay um which would mean there's not as many white areas so i wouldn't get it wouldn't pick up as much of my distress ink which is fine if that's what you want but i decided to go in with a fine paintbrush and just randomly i'm not going for perfection here i don't feel the need at all so all i'm doing fine paintbrush just obviously dry and I'm just very quickly, you know, I mean, we could go for precision here, but life's too short and um, I don't think we need to, to be honest. There we go. We can leave a little, you know, a little bit. We don't have to get every bit. If we just give it a bit of a, a bit of a brush. Okay. And then a good tap from there okay and then what you'll see so we've got just some on there but oh i've missed a leaf hello here we go another little tap okay i'm happy with that and that was really nice and um quick and easy as well wasn't it so i'm going to get rid of this powder over to one side because we will come back and use that um when we do the other piece shortly let's put the lids 
on these um, these glazes and what you'll find is if you've got um, you know like those little jam jars um, that you get the little mini with about the same size um, as these when you've got kind of a, a mix like this well basically what you've got there is is an extra color isn't it okay so that's not for it's not for the bin it's definitely definitely not for the bin um, right okay so I've got my piece here so I need to heat emboss so I'm just gonna heat up my uh, gun first of all or my tool should we call it a tool or it's a heat gun What's it say on it? Look, it says heat gun on it. Oh, heat gun. <laughs> okay, that's that's hot enough. So I'm gonna come in with that. Okay. And we're just gonna heat in box. Notice that I'm not wafting the heat tool around and keeping it in one area until the glaze melts and I can see it go um, glassy and then that's when I move along as soon as it moves as soon as you can see the powder turn do move along though because if you do stay in the same place for too long then the chances are you're going to burn the powder and you're going to burn your card there we go right so I'm going to turn that around now so I don't burn my fingers there we go here Okay, nearly there. Right. Okay, let's have a little look. So you can see all of the the sort of the spray the stray areas there, the stray specks of uh, the glaze. That's fine. But can you see the the glassy look there? So that's quite nice. I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop that to one side for the moment. Let's do our embossing first and then we'll do um, the, the inking. OK, right. So on the last piece, let me feel this again. So this side here is the in between bits are raised. That's the piece that I've just done. So this side is where the leaves are raised. Now, this one is kind of it is a little bit more challenging to be honest um, when you're pressing with the um, with the verse mark because if you press too hard again you're going to get this um, it, it's just the raised area is always just a little bit more of a challenge but again because I've already made my, my mind up that I'm not worried if I get spray uh, step specs then I'm not I'm just not going to worry about that too much so i'm just going to pounce this up and down not too hard and i can have a little look um because we want to get plenty on those leaves and again remember these are 3d they're not just one layer of of leaf so we've got to try and get in there a little bit yeah i'm not worried if i don't get right to the middle of the leaves because again it's going to add to the finished effect I think okay right I think I'm all right with that and again this is where it's handy to have um, a, a sort of a juicy versa mark as well okay so again just going to pop that in the folder and let me just pop this into my sandwich with my plates okay and through the machine okay here we go okay almost through right let's have a little look in here okay so what we should have on this side on the leaves we hope we hope we hope is um some first mark so let's again let's sprinkle some powder on first of all there we go we 
give that a squidge around. What we want is plenty of powder inside um, the, the leaves because that's the areas where we've hopefully got a good amount of first mark. Okay, some of the, was that peel paint or shabby shutters? Like uh, peel paint, so we go. And again, some of that colour over there as well. Okay, give that a, a shake around. And then again, we've got this other sort of mix. So I'm going to bring some of that in. And then we've got a third colour, and it means we're also not wasting as well. I don't like waste. There we go. I think these powders are going to last and last and last, but obviously, you know, not if you just <laughs> sling them in the bin every time you've got a, a little bit of excess. Right, here we go. So again, just squidge that around tap that off. I'm going to give it a really good tap now, okay, because I want to, I'm okay with some specks, can you see, on the in-between areas, okay, but if we can tap a bit off, that's good. Okay, so let's get rid of this powder now, it's just, there we go, that's out the way. I'll deal with that in a little while and again you know we could go in with the paintbrush in between and just give a little bit of if you want to um, on the original piece uh, I, I don't think I didn't bother on this because I was interested to see what the effect would be and, and I did like the effect but we'll have there you go let's just get rid of a bit Right, so heat gun again. Make sure you heat that up first. Here we go. So again, I'm keeping the heat gun in the same position until I can see the powder turn. I'm, I'm concentrating mainly on the um, on the actual leaves themselves because any bits that are in between that don't turn that don't get um, embossed they'll, that'll just brush off anyway but I do want to make sure I get a really good emboss in the leaves there we go that again if we just move that up and down and you can see yeah that's lovely okay so this is what we've got now so you can see we've got the the positive and the negative so when we come in now with something I mean I actually I really like those even just as as they are but as I say the the focus of um, this video is actually to sort of show the glazes as a as an emboss so let's bring those um distress inks in okay let's use do one piece at a time so we've got ripe persimmon and a tool here let's get rid of a little bit there and so i'm just there we go look at that and what you'll see because what we've done there we've glazed the, the clues in the name i suppose isn't it um the 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 glaze is acting as um as a resist which is fab okay let's get a little bit of uh festive berries as well here we go this is a nice color Okay, um, do I want some more orange? I think I'd like a bit more orange. So let's just give that to a little wipe. Pick up some more. There we go. Oh, look at that. 
like that I like that a lot okay right and then just to give a little bit of uh, atmosphere we'll have a little bit of aged mahogany here we go so we'll just so I won't press so hard here and what you'll find with this let me show you up here on can you see this corner we've got some really good coverage with the orange now if I don't press ever so hard you'll see that that ink is only picked up in certain areas see like the edges of the leaves and that again is because of the 3d embossing folder you see because you've got the these leaves are kind of they're dipped in the in the middle of them so they're raised at the edges which is just lisa has done uh and danny you know they've done an amazing job with these uh embossing folders this recent release um i was just so excited when I got the the email to say that mine have been dispatched here we go I think let's see let's go just very gently let's pick up those edges there as well look at see what I mean look in here can you see that that's gorgeous I really 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 like that all right so that's that one let's move on to this one so again, we'll start with the um, the orange, right? Pairs them on. Okay, and again, so we're just going to bob that colour on, and I'm giving it plenty of pressure because I'm not too worried about this ink going down into the leaves that are sunken um, because we've got a resist. Okay, so it's not going to cover our glaze there we go let's get some of this festive berries let's go really nice and bright there we go i'm very much in a a, a green and orange and red kind of mood at the moment do you have moods do you have a or do you always just change round or do you stick to what's safe there we go right and then again we're going to bring in some of the mahogany there we go so not so much pressure this time we don't want to we just want to um just give it a little bit of depth that's all we don't want to completely obliterate our lovely colours there we go and also the brighter you go with the colour the darker you go with the colour the more that this re resists this lovely glaze um, is going to show through as well there we go how's that that's nice I like that yeah it really does look 3d as well doesn't it even like that so that is our two pieces which i love equally um they look just completely different don't they with the with the colors okay so what i did then is um with the the other the finished piece because i've got two pieces here um i can actually make two two cards so the other pieces from this here i've put on the side let me have a me grab some bits and bobs already okay so I've just basically chopped the pieces down equally like so okay so this one is the the, the leaves are raised and this one the leaves are sunken okay so I've just chopped those down let's take uh, some let me see I think we'll use glue for quickness let me grab what have I got here um quickness she says quickness that one's is that a brand new one yeah I'm not doing quickness here am I <laughs> fantastic right let's have a go with this one just because it's there to hand the collar 
I haven't used this for ages. Let's hope it's not all dried out. Right, okay, so I've cut a piece of black card down. So this is five and three quarters. Oh, no, it's not. It's four and three quarters by six and three quarters to go on the five by seven card blank. Okay, squeeze a little bit. I'm looking around me now, looking for the open glue. I know it's here because I used it earlier, not to worry. It'll turn up the minute I finish the video. Right, here we go. So, I'm just going to pop that onto here. Okay, and then we've got our embossed panels. So again, just a little bit of, of glue. Okay, yeah, take that up at the top. Like so. Okay, and then the other piece. Okay, and again, I'm making sure that the leaves are all sort of facing up, they're sort of shooting upwards, if you like. So they're both going in the same direction. Here we go. Okay, and then through the middle. So what I've got here, I've just sort of looked at the colours that I've gone uh, that I've got within the piece, and I've picked out a piece of of card to go with. Right now, oh, actually, before I take that off, I've got a piece of twine. So let me pop that backing back on just for a minute, and I've got my twine. Let's see if we can take this around like so, around that way. Let's see if we've got enough for a bow this time or not. I don't always do bows because I think they're, they can be a bit um, feminine and if we're making something for a dude and we don't really want feminine, so a knot is better. There we go, we're going to stick with the knot. Let's sort of give those a bit of a jiggle. Like so. We'll mess with that in a minute. There you go, that'll do. Okay. And then we're just simply going to take those tabs away. And then I've got a strip along here because uh, that's also going to help that twine stay in place. It's not going to slip out. And then, let's see, put that across like so. Does that look about straight to you? What do you think? I think, yeah, we're okay. There we go. Okay, so that's another piece. Uh, so there you go you can see let's get rid of that dirty paper from underneath let's get a clean one there you go so two projects there so this is the, from the same piece as this one and this is from the same piece as this one so and I've got two more pieces now so I can make two more cards people will actually get birthday cards this year can you believe it maybe um, so I hope you enjoyed that so just a reminder what I've used um, I've used the the, the pretty leaves embossing folder um, from uh, Lisa Lisa's um, website is right there www.lisahortoncrafts.co.uk she's also on facebook um, as well so we've used that we've used versamark okay we've used just a couple of uh, regular distress inks and blending tools and we've given a little try out to um, the distress embossed glazes as well so um, I hope that you find that useful um, helps make you make your mind up whether you like those glazes or not whether you want to um, invest some of your hard-earned cash um, so thank you for joining me and I hope to see you again soon take care bye now